Those who are broken and mournful will be meek. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Of everything that Jesus says, this one just bothers me more than anything. It's not that I want to be proud. It's not that I want to be boastful. It's not that I don't want to walk in humility. But I'm telling you, in this present age, I struggle with meekness. Jesus said, blessed are those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. World history tells me something totally different. World history tells me the ones with the biggest Calvary and the biggest bombs govern the earth. But Jesus said, blessed are those who are meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now this is, one of, this is the only beatitude that is directly quoted from Old Testament scripture. And it comes from one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 37. I want to begin reading with verse 1. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not be envious towards wrongdoers. He's already lost me. I watch the news and I'm fretting. I watch the news and I'm angry. I watch the news and I'm horrified. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evildoing. For evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. There it is. Those who wait for the Lord will inherit the land. The humble, the meek, will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. I'm telling you, I have trouble with this. And the part that I have trouble is the waiting patiently on the Lord, particularly the words, cease from anger and forsake wrath. And that is the heart of meekness. The heart of meekness means I'm not going to let my life be governed by anger and wrath. The heart of meekness is I am not going to give violence for violence. I'm not going to get, live tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye. That's what meekness is. Pastor Dan, where in the world did you get that from? From the mouth of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5. I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. That's not what I want to do. I want to pick up the nearest two by four, and train him in righteousness. <laughs> you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I watch the news and I watch these horrible atrocities of Muslims burning Muslims and Muslims beheading Christians. And frankly, cease from anger and forsake wrath is not what I'm feeling. And just so you'll know that I'm not being political here, neither those on the left or the right have a clue as how to address the issue. Okay? I'm an equal opportunity critic here. And I don't, frankly, can't wrap my mind around the words of Jesus here. But if the words of Jesus are authoritative, they are. If Jesus is the new lawgiver, he is. If he is the enfleshed Torah, and he is. And if he is telling me, don't be like the Pharisees, don't be like the pagans, don't be like the Gentiles, and don't be like the hypocrites, turn the other cheek, then guys, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Jesus rejects the brutality of an eye for an eye justice. An eye for an eye justice promotes a vicious cycle of violence. Instead, Jesus insists on the transformative power of mercy, forgiveness, and grace. Jesus calls us to reconciliation. He says, open your arms and embrace your enemies. The problem with that is it puts us in a very vulnerable situation. Now, sometimes open your arms and embrace your enemies means your spouse. Sometimes open your arms and embrace your enemies means your pastor. Sometimes more than your pastor, probably your worship leader. I mean, there's all sorts of things here, but he's putting it, Jesus is deliberately putting us as being vulnerable. 
But what Jesus understands is there is no blessing in violence. There is no blessing in wrath. There is no blessing in fear. There is no blessing in anger. The only way we can live this blessed life and have this joy that transports us, transcends us into the kingdom of God is for us to cease from anger and forsake wrath. And I'll be honest.